Hey, it's Pastor Mike. If you enjoy listening to this podcast and make it a regular part of your day, can I ask for your regular support? We really can't make any of our sermon series or devotions without the continual support of friends like you. Time of Grace, in case you didn't know, is 100% donor-funded, meaning it is your gifts that make it possible for us to use television and print and digital media to share the good news of God's amazing grace. Just click on the link in the episode notes, and thank you for all of your prayers and all of your support. God bless. So this week, I want to tell you a story about a dinner party. A dinner party in the Bible that almost didn't happen. A dinner party when one person said one thing, and all of a sudden people are fighting and finger pointing and yelling. One person gets up, leaves the meal. That's what I want to tell you about. And maybe you're thinking, that just described any holiday meal at my house where we fight and we get angry and we get upset. And man, that happened in the Bible. What we're going to talk about this week is the Lord's Supper, Holy Communion. And the cool thing about this is if you are brand new to Christianity, you're just starting to dip your toe into what this whole church thing is all about, you've probably seen it. You know, people come forward to the front of church and they get something to eat and something to drink and it's this, this holy meal, a special thing, and they sit down and you, you've seen it, but you maybe don't know that much about it. Or even if you've been a, man, a lifelong Christian, we don't know that much about the backstory of communion. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to pull back the curtain. We're going to go in that upper room with the disciples and with Jesus and see the intrigue, the fighting, the feuding that's going on. And we're going to find ourselves there as well. So this whole thing happened. It all goes down Holy Week. Now, what's Holy Week? That's the last week of Jesus' life here on this earth. It starts on Palm Sunday where Jesus decides to have this impromptu parade with one float, just Jesus. And he goes into Jerusalem, and no, no candy's being thrown, but the, but the people throw down palm branches. And they throw down their, their coats and cloaks for Jesus to walk across. And they're, they're thinking Jesus is going to be this king that overthrows the Romans. And the week goes on. Thursdays, we're going to spend most of our time. Good Friday, where Jesus dies. And of course, Easter Sunday, when Jesus comes back to life. Now, this dinner party, how did it happen? Matthew chapter 26, mostly that's where we're going to hang out. And so Matthew tells us the disciples go to Jesus and they go, Jesus, where are we going to celebrate this Passover meal? And there's intrigue, there's confusion with their question because already it's too late. It's as if Jesus failed already and you can hear that a bit in the disciples' question if you understand a bit the background. All right, so let's back up 1,500 years. About 1,500 years earlier, God spoke to a prophet and a leader of the people known as Moses. And Moses wrote down the laws of the people, how they're to worship and live. And one of the laws God gave is that every year, the Israelites should all go to Jerusalem and celebrate the Passover meal. And so Jesus is there to celebrate with his disciples. But this city, Bible scholars, Bible Smart people think that the city might have swollen by 70, 80, 90,000 plus people. There's no room. There's just no way that the disciples and Jesus are going to find a room to have this meal on the first day when everyone is there. And so they're thinking, Jesus, come on, you failed us. But Jesus, he's all calm and cool. He says, all right, guys, just do this. Go into the city. And as soon as you get there, you'll, you'll see a man right at the city gate and he'll be carrying a water jar. Now, follow that guy and the house he happens to go into, talk to him and he'll have room for us. It sounds like a fool's run, right? If all of a sudden I came up to you and said, let's go to the Super Bowl. Let's go to the Super Bowl on the day of the Super Bowl. All you got to do, my friend, is go downtown and find a guy walking a poodle with a pink scarf. The dog's got the scarf, not the guy. And while he immediately passes by a payphone, good luck finding one of those, follow that guy, and whatever house he goes into, he's going to have Super Bowl tickets for all of us. Are you going to go? There's no way. Because it's just me. I'm just a guy. But when Jesus said that, the disciples went. And guess what the Bible said? They found it exactly how Jesus said it would happen. And why? Because Jesus never fails. 
He's always got a plan. Now, in your life right now, where do you think, God, you're, you're failing? This part, this part of my life right now, this is all messed up. This isn't working out. And God, you, you, you're failing me. Where are you? Where's your power? Where's your, where's your presence? All you got to do is be like those disciples and step out in faith. Step out in trust. Because why? Well, it's Jesus. And Jesus has shown you in the Bible and he's shown you through the cross. He will never, ever, he'll never fail you. So come back tomorrow. We're going to look a little bit deeper into this account and we're going to see how, how one thing that was said erupted a fight. Man, it's going to sound like a dinner party at your house. We'll see you then.